All right, what's up everyone? Uh, cool, so today, uh, or I found a check engine light came up. Uh, so I've checked it before and generally it's saying like uh, the O2 sensor is off. Uh, so we're gonna be checking that out today. Uh, so first, the first thing that we'll need is like, I have a uh, consult port reader. Um, so we'll need that and then a computer uh, to hook it up to and then some software. Uh, so let's get that out. <laughs> Computer. All right, so here's the consult port. Uh, basically, I think you can buy these online <laughs> for pretty cheap. Uh, this is like the consult little plug, and then uh, it goes to a serial port. So for modern computers, you probably got to get a serial port adapter, uh, and I think these are pretty cheap too. But uh, yeah, you can basically just eBay these and find them. Uh, I'll throw a link up in the description though of one of them for an example. So what we need to do is uh, hook this up to the, compu to the computer and then also the car. And then basically the computer can read the, uh, all the sensors that are on the car uh, through the console port. So you can actually leave this running while your car is running and see like your speed on the computer. You can see O2 sensors, you can see fuel and uh, all this other stuff, basically every single sensor. Um, so it's pretty sweet, but you can also read check engine lights. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. So where you plug it in is under the dash. Right here by the fuses. So basically, if you look up here, that's the console port. So go ahead and plug that in. So I think that's in. Get this stuff out of that was so we can put our feet down. So I found that all the software is uh, for PCs. So I downloaded VirtualBox because uh, I'm on a Mac and then uh, set up Windows XP on here. Um, so you'll have to do a little bit here with uh, getting Windows XP running. Uh, and then I use this software ECU Talk. And so one thing that kind of got me is that you need to make sure that the USB is shared with the uh, VirtualBox machine. So. In our case, it's this USB serial controller D. And then um, once that's shared, you need to find like the right COM port for the uh, for the adapter, basically, where the console port is. You need to make sure your car is on also. So if your car's not on, then it has nothing to read from. So I just turn the key so all the electronics turn on. And then one more um, so that the lights on your dash come up. And it should come up, uh, so we might have to fix Alright, so there it is. Yeah, we found it. And now it's like reading through all the sensors to figure out uh, which ones we can do. Um, so over here, it will continue to load in all the sensors, uh, but then there's also the faults tab here. Um, so for us, just because we're checking the codes, uh, we just need the faults tab, but I'll let this finish up. Cool. So there's the everything reading. Uh, you can see, if I rev up, it goes and it's like super responsive. Um, so then we can go over and read fault codes. So I got a code 98 coolant temperature sensor um, on six start. So basically you can clear the fault codes here, um, and then Uh, it will clear the codes for the car, and so that'll turn the check engine light off. And then you can go and say uh, no errors detected when you read fault codes again. So here are the gauges again, and uh, 
Let's see, I'm gonna go to AutoZone and then uh, clean out my mass airflow sensor just because I'm getting a little lag on the below 3000 RPMs on first gear. All right, so as I was getting ready to head out, my rear view mirror just came off. Uh, so apparently don't get that glue that uh, I tried to use. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's, it's not that great. So here's the mirror. Maybe put on a lot more than I did. So it looks like there's just that one little, one little strip here of glue. That wasn't enough. All right, I gotta go pick some up. All right, what's up? So uh, today we're gonna be cleaning off the uh, mass airflow sensor. Um, so basically when I am in first gear and I'm accelerating a little bit, sometimes it can lag. Uh, and so I read online that either uh, you can clean off your mass airflow sensor because basically that gets dirty a little bit and then it bogs down. Um, or your O2 sensor might be bad. But the previous owner already replaced the O2 sensor, so I'm just gonna clean off the mass airflow sensor. So what we need is uh, some electric parts cleaner. Uh, some people will use brake cleaner also, um, but basically you just need something that degreases stuff and evaporates and doesn't leave any kind of residue. Uh, so gonna be doing that. Get the hood popped. This right here is the mass airflow sensor. Um, so basically it's just reading the air that's coming in and then adjusting the fuel uh, ratio depending on that. So let's get at it. All right, so I'm gonna pl unplug it right here. All right, so the plan is, got this completely removed, unscrew this, this is the whole mass airflow sensor, uh, and then just spray down here uh, at the sensor, you can kind of see it. There's like this uh, gray wire that goes across. Um, so just spraying the uh, electrical cleaner all on that. These are just 10 millimeter bolts that hold this on. So we got that off. That's what it looks like. A little filter in there too. All right, so here's the sensor. You can see that metal wire thing? That's basically what we're gonna be spraying. Uh, that's what we need to clean off for some like grease and dirt and stuff. Cool, now we just need to let this dry. Right, so while we let that dry, let's get in and uh, get that rear view mirror back up. All right, so here's the mirror. I ended up going to uh, like O'Reilly's getting this cheap rear view mirror adhesive is like three dollars basically I'm just gonna try and put as much of this on the thing as possible uh, I don't think I got a good enough coverage that last time so this time I'm just gonna be slathering it all over so first like last time we need to uh, clean this area off found this rusty razor blade in my garage
There we go, crystal clean. Right, so part of what made this fall off is when I screwed it back in, probably pulled the pulled the button off the screen a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this side of the button off as well so that we can get a good stick. So I don't wanna have to be doing this again. All right, so it's basically the same thing. You, uh, so you can see these are cheaper, just come in little pouches. So you clean the th place that you're gonna be putting it up here, and then you put the adhesive on this button and uh, where you want it to mount, and then you mount it up. So, so I want my mirror to be right there. So the button's gotta go like that. So, You hold it like this. So you let that dry for two minutes. All right, so the two minutes has been passed. So we're gonna apply the adhesive to the button and then, uh, then after that, to put the button up for 30 seconds with our fingers it says and then you can't put the mirror on for another 30 minutes so I'm gonna put a lot more adhesive and they say because I did not have enough last time All right, so that's like a good amount of adhesive. Okay, and that's definitely squirting off the side, so that should be enough. Hold it up for 30 seconds. All right, so that's been in about 30 seconds. It says wait 30 minutes to put the mirror back on, so I'm gonna wait that just because I don't want it falling off. So let's go put that mass airflow sensor back on. So it's all dry now, so that's cool. Um, now I just need to bolt it back up. And then I noticed that the uh, hose here wasn't totally tightened down uh, when uh, this was on before. So that also could have been part of the problem is that air was leaking in here and making it bog out. Um, looks like it's tight everywhere else, but it's just not, it wasn't on here. So air could get in. This clamp, like it's at eight millimeter. So tighten that back up. There we go, nice and tight. Hopefully that's not leaking anymore. And hopefully this is clean. All right, so now we're gonna go try it out. Uh, see if we get that bogging issue anymore. And uh, let's see. Hopefully it helps. All right, so it starts up all good. Take it out for a spin, see how it does. All right, cool. So my uh, camera ended up stopped recording, uh, but the car ran great. Didn't have the bogging issue anymore. Uh, idled totally fine, was great. Uh, so it seemed to help out a bit and uh, got that rear view mirror back up again. So that's awesome. Um, so I'll be posting every Sunday on uh, whatever I end up doing to the car. Uh, and so if you wanna keep on seeing it, go ahead and subscribe. If you like this video, like it, and uh, comment if you want to see anything specific. So uh, thanks so much for watching. See ya.